morning, everyone. It's nice to see so many people here. Um, so, my name's Katie Fem. I'm going to be speaking today about writing modular style sheets with CSS modules. Um, before I start, if you want to uh, take a look at some of the resources mm -hmm. that I'm mentioning um, in today's talk, that URL will be on screen throughout. Um, all the links will be there and also my slides if you want to follow along. Also, a quick content warning as well. Um, the animation in my slides is um, preceded by the DZY tag. Um, if animation makes you feel uncomfortable or sick, the DZY tag will appear before the animation in my slides. If you want to find out more about that, check out Nat Tarnoff's excellent talk, The UX of Stairs, from last year's Scotland JS conference, and that will explain everything that you need to know about the DZY tag. So, without further ado, why do we need another tool? We've got SAS, we've got LESS, we've got all sorts of build tools. Mm -hmm. Why do we need something else? Well, it's all about this, what we call the shared global scope. All our styles share the same environment. The styles from one rule can override another uh, rule's styles freely, just like rubbish released in the sea in Europe can have catastrophic consequences for islands in the Pacific. And this makes our sites brittle and vulnerable to change. Sharing code between teams and between third parties isn't a, fun, isn't a, um, a trivial task. We've got no, got no guarantee that CSS from another team will work with our code. We have to have some understanding of how it works before we can start using it. Developers are also trying to build complex websites by building them out of reusable modular user interface components that can be copied and combined just like flat pack furniture. The idea is that you, if you want to build a new page or a new feature, you can put these um, UE components together from a toolkit and make new features faster. Methodologies like atomic design, popularized by Brad, uh, Brad Frost, have really caught on, and building user interfaces from these toolkits makes developing new features easier. Meanwhile, we discovered the benefits of writing modular JavaScript with Node.js and Webpack. JavaScript also faced a problem of this shared global scope, and it fixed it by giving us safe little rock pools to code in rather than the ocean of global scope. And this is what CSS modules aims to do for CSS, taking CSS out of the global scope and making it local by default. And CSS modules isn't a single tool. It's a format developed by the community and a series of plugins that implement it as well. So how do you write a module of CSS? Well, you write it like this. It's very similar to normal CSS, except rules are local by default. If you want to use CSS globally, you have to define it using a, a special keyword, which we'll get onto in a minute. Your style sheets are processed by a CSS modules plugin, which works a little bit like SAS. So your source code is fed into the uh, CSS modules plugin, it's transformed and it's output at the other end and it's transformed, something has changed. The plugin adds the unique hash to your classes, which is generated by the class name and the path to your source file. This unique hash is unique. No two classes will have the same hash, which means that two rules cannot overwrite each other even if they have the same class name, so that you can reuse class names wherever it makes sense to. If you want to name a button a button, you can. In fact, it's not unlike block element modifier, except in, the, in, except in this case, the plugin does the work so you don't have to. You don't have to think of names for your blocks and your elements. If you want to name, um, if you want a class for a label, you just call it a label. You use the terms that make sense for the given situation. And the CSS modules plugin will do the rest. So sometimes you want to write, you want to write global styles instead, like setting fonts and colors throughout the application on any class that appears anywhere. If you want to do this, 
you add the global keyword, identi uh, the global identifier to a selector, and that makes it work normally. If we have a look at the output, we can see that classes pass through without being transformed, and they'll work normally. Now, this is what makes the CSS modules plugin different to SAS. It also creates a map file for you to include in your templates. And this maps unique classes back to the originals so that you can inject the unique classes into your templates. This example is in the JSON format, which can be loaded in in any given scripting language, such as PHP, um, in, uh, in Ruby, or in Python. Um, also, there are other plugins available that will export to a common JS format, so you can use it with Webpack or with Node.js. So, as a quick example of how you can inject these unique styles into your, st into your templates, this is an example in PHP. Um, I'm loading in the JSON file. I'm decoding it from JSON into a PHP variable that I can reference, and I'm injecting it into my CSS, into my HTML, sorry. Something else that you can do with CSS modules is compose rules from other CSS rules. So here I'm composing um, a, a, a rule with a class called input from another rule with a class called shared from another module. And this allows us mm -hmm. to assemble and compose um, CSS rules from a set of other rules so that the element will inherit both of them. And that allows us to reduce code repetition. If you have a set of styles that make sense for a lot of different, um, for a lot of different uh, elements, such as different input fields, you can extract that and include it in a module that you can reuse. So the way it does this is mm -hmm. that the included class will be injected into your HTML wherever the including class is also used, making sure that the elements will gain the styles of both. And again, CSS modules does that for you, so you don't have, once you've uh, written it in your module source file, you don't have to think about it again. So how do you start using them? Let's talk about the plugins that are available for you to do this. If you're using Webpack to write JavaScript applications, the CSS Loader plugin supports CSS modules, and that supports you if you're writing single-page web applications in a JavaScript ecosystem. There's also PostCSS. If you've not heard about PostCSS, it's a preprocessor similar to SAS, except instead of defining a new language like SAS does, it allows you to customize its features um, uh, using plugins just like CSS modules. So if you want to add functionality such as variables, mixins, and nesting, you can install those plugins if you want them, and CSS modules will work alongside them. So I've done a quick demo using um, a PHP, a simple PHP application and post CSS and CSS modules to show you exactly how it works. So I've created a form that you can see in my browser on the left, um, and it has a UE component for text field and a UE component for submit button. Um, these have their own CSS module style sheet and a template as well. We can see the source code for our CSS module style sheet for the text field on the right. So, if I wanted to change the styles for this, such as changing the um, such as changing the border property to dashed, and run my task runner and um, run the CSS mod, uh, modules plugin as well, we can see that the styles have updated on the text field. So far, so straightforward. Let's take a look at the CSS module for the submit button. We can see that it's also using the, in, uh, uh, the input class name for one of its rules. And normally in CSS, we wouldn't be able to do that. We wouldn't be able to reuse um, diff, uh, the same class name for different styles. So if I change the, if I change the um, border property to something different, 
on the input button, on the uh, in button's input um, rule, we can see that actually the styles are behaving independently. It's not overriding the styles for the uh, text field. Um, and the reason that this is happening is because CSS modules is making those rules, th those class names unique. If we open Chrome DevTools, we can see that clearly. We can see that the class names are made unique using those unique hashes. So what if I want to change the background color globally um, from CSS modules? I have a page, um, I have an, an element with the page class name on lots of different pages. And if I want to change the styles for that, I can use the global keyword. So if I make changes to that and change the border style on that, we can see that they'll be updated on every single instance of element that has the class name page because it will behave normally. I've also extracted styles common to both the text fields and the submit button into a class that I can reuse through composition. And if I make changes to this rule, such as increasing the font size, we can see that it will be applied to all elements that, re, uh, that compose that shared class. So they get both update. And we can see that this is um, possible because the included, the, the class that is being composed, is being used wherever it's being composed from. So if you want to try it for yourself, the source code is available up there. Don't worry, I'm going to change the slide in a second. If you want to find it, if you want to find the link to this, it's in the URL on the bottom as well. So there's some quirks to using CSS modules. Um, you can't use classes from different modules together unless they are global, because um, CSS modules will make them unique. And this isn't as bad as it sounds. If you've been using the block element modifier naming convention, um, you'll be used to trying to target elements using more unique selectors, trying to make your selectors more unique and using more of them. And this has been quite successful. We're used to trying uh, to targeting styles using fewer, um, fewer selectors in our CSS. An ID, only ID and class selectors are transformed. Type, attribute, and pseudo selectors aren't, aren't affected. They'll pass straight through CSS modules, plugins, and won't be, uh, won't be transformed. So what are the benefits of using CSS? Your style sheets can now be as modular as the rest of your code. It's not like a separate blueprint that lives completely external to your application. Um, they can be a, a, an integral part to um, your application, and they can live right alongside your HTML templates. And maintaining a modular directory structure by grouping files together by component strengthens this relationship. They have more in common with your templates than they do by files of the same type, so it makes sense to group them together. Mm. Your CSS is more durable as well because different modules cannot overwrite each other. Your code is more maintainable. You can jump in without fear and change unique classes because you know that they won't be, um, they won't affect anything in a completely unrelated part of your application. And problems like specificity will be made more manageable because you're dealing with specificity on a much smaller scale. And sharing code is easier. Your homepage team can name their classes using terms that suit them. And your checkout team can do the same and their CSS won't break each other. You can even build user interface toolkits of, of um, uh, user interface components and distribute them um, in their own code repositories and their own NPM modules, which is really useful if you are um, working in a large corporation, in a large organization, and you want to share your code, or even open source your toolkit as well to make it available to the wider community. 
And also, modular CSS is a trend. It's not just CSS modules that is, um, as a project that is doing this. Tools such as React, Radium, and Aphrodite allow you to write style sheets in JavaScript and define styles locally. The drawback for these is that they are all designed for JavaScript platforms. You can't use them in the PHP, Ruby, and Python layers of your applications. There's also performance considerations that you'd want to take before inlining styles into your templates as well. So this is what it's all about. This is what I think is CSS modules' key benefit. Being able to build truly modular user interface elements to share, made up of your HTML templates and your CSS. Your components will only have access to the CSS CSS it needs, and it will control everything else internally. Your component is the unit of reuse, to a quote a friend of mine, Glenn Mailer, who helped us build a modular application at work. The idea that if you want to share code, the best way to do it is to share complete user interface components, because we understand what they're supposed to do. We understand the requirements of them. And because of CSS modules, we don't have to um, care too much. We don't have to know too much about how they work, about how their CSS works. We can understand what properties we want to pass in, and we know what we want to get out. And the component will take care of the rest internally. So that's it. A quick shout out to my employer, Sky Betting and Gaming, for paying for me to be here today. We're hiring in Yorkshire, so if you're from Yorkshire and you want to say hello, please come and say hello to us. We're just over there. And that's it. My slides are available online at that link there. That's also in the website at the bottom. And I'm available on Twitter at Katie underscore Fen. Thank you very much.